So it's a match review, Sheffield United 2, West Ham 2, uh, a day of controversy, really, um, for all the wrong reasons, you feel, Riley, mate. It was just a really frustrating day all round. But ultimately, it's a point on the road uh, when you stand back from it, probably not the worst thing in the world. It, you know, it could, it could have obviously been a lot better. Uh, we'll talk about all the sort of key points in the moment because there's a fair bit to get through. Um, but look, let's start with the, the, the early stage of the day, mate, which was the lineup uh, coming out. Seeing Jared Bowen back on the on the you know in the team sheet, which I think was a huge boost. Um, was you surprised to see him in it? Yeah, I mean, like I said, um, I think it was a, a huge risk just putting him straight back in the lineup. But um, you know, it's obvious that we needed him, and we probably should have started him from the from the get go. Um, I was pretty happy with the lineup to honest, mate. I think uh, Ben Johnson in centre midfield was a, a, a bold shout, but one that seemed to pay off quite well. Uh, mm. Maxwell Cornet going on the left where he should be, obviously paid off with the goal. Uh, Danny Ings surprisingly actually paid off pretty well as well. Um, you know, no one really likes to admit when they're wrong, but yeah, pretty good game. Uh, mm. Probably probably his best in a West Ham shirt, uh, despite not scoring. Obviously, he won the penalty, but. Um, you know, I thought he looked solid as well. Uh, Defence, again, I mean, frail for me and I'm just not strong enough. And, you know, I think probably the, the lineup didn't necessarily reflect reflect that. Um, you know, I probably wanted a little bit more of maybe like Ogbon and Mavropanos. But, you know, I, at the end of the day, I think it was um, uh, it was a decent lineup and it, and it paid off. But uh, I think probably looking at it prior to the game, I was a little bit concerned as uh, to, to what I was seeing. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, for me, you know, the, the big bonus obviously earlier in the day was seeing Jared Bowen play. We got I kind of got the, the tip that that was going to happen, so it was a really good to hear. And like you say, Riley, there was an element of risk. But what I think was a huge plus point was not only did Bowen start, but he played the whole game and he didn't actually mm. look uncomfortable at all. He looked quite fresh and quite. Uh, probably you probably argue slightly rusty, maybe just a slight, you know, maybe needs a game to sort of get back into it. But he was apart from that, he was he looked pretty good. He didn't he certainly didn't seem to appear to be struggling at all. Um, so that was a real big bonus. Of course, the, the the blow was not having Edson Alvarez. I think he failed a late fitness test. I think he was close to playing, but they decided against it. Uh, um that midfield without him, our defense actually and midfield really doesn't tick without Alvarez in it. We we really are lacking a defensive midfielder cover because the the partnership I find with uh Suchek and Walt Prowse is just no good. It we, the teams just seem to walk through that midfield far too easily. Don't get me wrong, they both work hard. They they're just they they lack that <clears throat> that that defensive mindset that someone standing like a rock who can organize. And I just think that's what Alvarez provides, that bit of steel. And I think we do lack that big time. And obviously, we, we, you know, we talked about um, Calvin Phillips before, and we'll be doing another update on that soon. Uh, hopefully that, that that will go through this week, fingers crossed. But one of them games where you, can, you feel like oh, if we had like another defensive midfielder in just to drop in that knows exactly what they're doing, I think it'd make a big difference. Because like you say, it makes our back line look frail. Um, but look, let's go through the game uh, quickly. I mean, when, when I say go through the game quickly, we'll sort of talk about the step-by-step sort of step step points of it. Uh, but obviously, there are big bits that we need to talk about, uh, VAR being a huge one. Um, I've got to be honest, mate. I, I wasn't really impressed with the performance, um, but it was it was to be expected. I don't think it was anything shocking. I wasn't going wow. I was I was expecting us to be playing beautiful football. It was exactly what I suspected we would be doing: play counter attack, absorbing the pressure, playing a little bit of football. But we, ultimately, we were we were pretty sloppy. I found when we were in possession. Um, but then we against the run of play, mate. We score. Um, we go one up. Maxwell Corne. I, I didn't. Th- I didn't really see the goal coming. Personally, I thought. I thought at that point, I thought we'll probably get to half time and to see it through and be nil nil. But we go one up. Um, I mean, I think it was Danny Ings, wasn't it? Danny Ings had a strike on goal. Um, he's got deflected, fallen into the path of corner. He's volleyed it lovely with his left boot, um, left foot right into the, the, the corner, bottom corner. It was lovely finish. And one you hope. We'll give him that lift, that bit of boost that he's needs. Because I think that's his first goal for West Ham, if I'm, if I'm correct. Because I know he only scored one at Chelsea, which should have been his fucking first goal. Um, but it wasn't. Uh, chalked mm. off, of course. But I believe that's his first goal for West Ham. So, nice to see it. Um, I, I don't think he was brilliant all round. But, yeah, what, what, what did you make of the goal? Was you, you pleased to see it for him? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's clinical. It's a difficult finish. Um, he sneaks it in at the back post. I mean, it's what you want from him. And... You know, like you say, it's his first goal on a West Ham shirt, which is, you know, to be honest, quite it's quite astounding, really, isn't it? Considering that he's played, I think, 30-odd games for us. 
Um, mm. Albeit probably mm. most of them off the bench, but it's not a yeah, great return. Yeah. But, you know, he spent time out injured, and like I say, he's come off the bench quite a lot. But you know, if there's ever a time to step up and get that first goal for your club, it's at a time like this when we're you know Kudus, Paqueta, Alvarez. I mean, they're without a doubt probably our three best players, bar Jared Bowen, who obviously started. So you know, we are definitely lacking some players, and you know, if you're going to step up like that. The same way, unfortunately, you know, Danny Ings does because it makes us look a little bit naive. But, you know, again, he had a good game and it's good to see the players stepping up. And, you know, all you can ask in a game like that is for your players to be clinical. And, I mean, you know, it's a very underrated finish to be able to take it on the volley and sneak it in the, the bottom corner like that. Yeah, yeah, it was. I, I, I agree. I think he, he made it look easier than what it was. It was actually a very, very good finish. And it was nice because it's just that sort of reminder, that gentle reminder to not only David Moyes, but, but for the West Ham fans as well, everybody like this is what I can do. I'm actually I'm, I've got ability because um, he took it really well and at perfect time to score. But then, of course, we go and concede. Um, really, really poor goal to concede, I thought, defensively. Poor from Zuma in particular. Um uh, I just feel like with Zuma at the moment, it's a shame because he's such he's such a talented player, and probably he, he probably could say, and I think with a lot of certainty, he's probably our most talented centre back. He is he's very very gifted, but he's just broken, mate. You can just see he really struggles around that pitch. He looks he looks always looks like he's about to get injured. He, even yesterday at one point, I think it was in the second half, right near the tail end of the game, he went down and was sort of screaming and holding his knee. You think this guy is just a walking disaster. He always seems to have problems. Um, it's something the West Ham have got to address because he just looks so uncomfortable. But he was, yeah, he was at fault definitely for the equaliser. Uh, Diaz, wasn't it, that sort of got the rebound and smashed it in. And it's Diaz. I mean, yeah. it, it, it would be Diaz, wouldn't it? I mean, his yeah. first first goal, by the way, he did, he never scored for Villarreal. That's his first goal. First goal for, uh, you know, Sheffield United. First minute for Sheffield United. He mm. scores his goal after us being interested in him for, what, like two odd years? Didn't score mm. a single goal for the Real. First goal of the year, first goal in so long. And, of course, yeah. it's against us. I mean, it just makes perfect sense, doesn't it? Yeah. Uh, you could, I, I don't know why we didn't put bets on that one. But, you know, mm. yeah, I just think we're not we're not strong enough in the air at all. I mean, both of the goals came from long balls into the box. And, yeah. really, see, that, that should be a bread and butter for the defender. You know, a long ball into the box. Mm. You should be able to, you know, steady yourself well enough, have your area in the box um, to where you can just head it out. It's not like it's a, a clever, you know, ball across the goal or it's mm. a big looping one at the back post on a counter-attack. It's, you know, coming into the final third, just a long ball forward. And, um, you know, I just don't understand how we're not strong enough to deal with that in the box. And he gets a yeah. free header and Areola, to be fair, um, makes a decent save, but he puts it right back in the danger zone, which is something, again, that he's quite susceptible to. It's just a poor goal all around, really, for us. There's no one tracking in midfield. There's no one strong enough to say, that's my header, that's my ball. I'm going to mm. absolutely smash it, whether I take the man or whatever. Um, and, you know, it's just very, like I say, it's very disappointing, especially when you get that lifeline of going one new up. Yeah, it is. It's frustrating, isn't it? It's, you watch these um, these things uh, uh, occur and you think, as you say, with the, the ability we've got at the back, we should be handling things like that a lot better. Really frustrating. I think the only probably argument, which is uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more towards the end when we talk about reviewing the game in itself, was whether it was justified. In terms of, was it deserved for the, for the home side? Arguably, probably so. I think that actually was a better side overall, pretty much about the game. I thought the first half, certainly, they, we, weren't, we weren't playing very well. Um, but frustrating, yeah, really frustrating. When, when you can see goals that you feel like we should be handling a lot better, it's really annoying. Um, but it, and it was a really frustrating time to concede because I think it was a 43rd, 44th minute that they scored, so right on half time, which is just a terrible time naturally to concede anyway. It just you know knocks the mood big time um, and gives them a lift. Because I've got to be honest, uh, Riley, for a team that are down the bottom, fighting with a new manager, and, and let's be honest, not just a new manager an old hero coming back to manage them, a bit of a legend at uh, Sheffield United. I thought the atmosphere was terrible. I thought it was really flat. They they, sound, they looked nervous. I don't... Sheffield United didn't play well. They, they, they didn't, they, you know, all right, they played well for possibly their level, but it wasn't a game where I was thinking, blimey, back to the wall here. This is a tough old game. And I was expecting quite a raucous atmosphere and we were going to be right up against it. But I thought it was quite quiet and quite tame and... Um, yeah, it's so really annoying that we gave them that lift on half time, but then I uh, then and then I expected the second half to come out and they'd be really at it and right at, but no, it was quite flat again from the home side. They're just nervous, they, they come across, which is understandable, obviously, being bottom of the league and needing a result. But I didn't think that 
I, I thought it was enough for us, more than enough for us to handle. Mm. Um, and then, of course, we get the uh, controversies then start kicking in. Um, of course, we get um, a penalty, um, uh, which was which was deserved. Uh, de- definitely a, a penalty. Well, well played by Danny Ings. I've got to say, like you say, we'll talk about him a little bit more in a second. But yeah, really, really well worked from him. We did well to earn that penalty. He, he played really well. Um, and I will go as far, and I'll talk about this again a little bit, as I say, but I'll, I'll put my, I'll my hands up on that one, Danny Ings. He really did shut up uh, from some people, including myself, and I'm, I'm, and I'm more than happy that he did. I'm certainly not sitting there thinking, oh, he's made me look like a tit. I'm more than happy to go, do you know what? Like He, he played well, and he, he, he earned that right and, and got us the penalty. Um, obviously, then we tucked it away, which uh, put us back in front. And to be honest with you, mate, I, I, I'll be honest... I don't know about you, but when we got to the sort of final 10 minutes of the game, 10, 15 minutes of the match, I was I, I was done. I, 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 the three points were in the bag as far as I was concerned. Sheffield United had nothing. We, we, we looked all right. We were pretty comfortable. All right, it wasn't a wonderful performance. I'm not seeing a game we were, we were cruising. But I just didn't see them scoring at all. I thought they, they, they've got nothing in the tank here. Like, we, we can deal with this. We're just going to shut up shop and see this game out. Um, there was a couple of big moments, though, of course, um, and you've touched on it earlier was Ben Johnson coming on for Max Cornet. Now, at this point, um, I think we're all slightly scratching our heads at it. Why is Cornet coming off? He looked quite lively. He's, you know, he scored a goal earlier. You don't really want to take him off and lose his confidence. And then puts on Ben Johnson in midfield. I mean, we're all kind of going, what's he, I mean, what's he doing here? What are you doing? But, bloody hell, mate. Like, Ben Johnson, not only did he come in and, and did okay, he looked quite assured and looked pretty good in midfield. He looked, His head was up. He was pinging the ball around. He was comfortable. He looked good on the ball. He was getting stuck in. And I thought, you know what? Like, you know, fair play to David Moyes. He kind of shut a few people up as well there because I think everyone was kind of... I, I, I mean, I wasn't at the game, but I was hearing there was a bit of booing going on and you don't know what you're doing to Moyes and all that. And I think that was shut up pretty quickly because within the first five minutes or so, you could see Ben Johnson actually look quite comfortable in midfield. And was you quite surprised then to see that? Because I certainly bloody was. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the fans, mate. By uh, the end of the game, well, not the end of the game, you know, prior to all the chaos, they were singing, who needs Sexton Rice? We've got Ben Johnson. So <laughs> That's brilliant, isn't it? Yeah, they, fantastic. They changed mind pretty quickly. But mm. I think when you think about it, that is probably Ben Johnson's preferred position. I mean, he's he's not very good going forward, in my opinion, uh, when he's playing uh, at the full-back role. Um, but he's brilliant at reading the game. And I think he's got a very good range of passing. Um, give him a bit of confidence. And I think, Midfield could actually be a very, very good avenue for him to get into. I mean, it's a it's a place where we need players. We need players to step up and get into. Um, mm. I think you know Soufal, as you know, I said before the game that I thought he'd be very important, and you know I thought he had a, an okay game. And I think the how well he can attack and how well Emerson can attack, you can't really lose that through Ben Johnson, despite how good he is defensively. Um, and centre back, I just again I don't think he's big enough or strong enough to be able to fit that role unless he's maybe playing in the back three and playing the, the old Creswell role with the sort of left mm. centre back role. Yeah. Um, so yeah. centre midfield, I think, is a very good avenue for him. And like I say, it's a it's a position where we need players. And, you know, if we can adopt Ben Johnson's try and take on that role and, and give him his 60k a week, as opposed to shipping him off somewhere else. I mean, he's obviously very keen to play football here, which is, again, is something you always want to see as a West Ham fan. Someone who, you know, clearly wants to, to play, doesn't want to just swan off and, and go off and play for Southampton or, you know, somewhere else. So I think it was a very bold shout by Moyes. I don't know if it's something that, you know, they've worked on in training or if we just thought, sod it, I'll just roll the dice and, you know, see what happens. But, you know, we could have found ourselves a new position with Ben Johnson and I think he did very well at it. Mm, mm, yeah, I agree. I, 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 I couldn't agree more, mate, with that. I think it's that's exactly what it was. It was it was a bit of an eye-opener, actually, that we've actually got someone else that can slot in. I was saying it before, mate, and... Uh, I said it in the in the um, I did a, a transfer update which went out yesterday as well that the um, the Ben Johnson situation needs to be resolved as far as I'm concerned. I think I think he's a really vital cog to West Ham. He really is. He's kind of proving a real decent utility player. He can drop in at right back. He, he, he performs well. He's been, he's been this season. He's been decent overall. He's been pretty decent at left back. He seems I actually prefer him at left back. I do the right back now. And then to free to him to come in and then slot in the midfield and actually look composed. And he, did, he didn't even look out of place. You know what I mean? I was like half expecting him to play. Like, he was OK, but I was expecting like, he's going to get caught out of position here quite a bit. No, he was quite... He, he looked comfortable. He looked like he'd, he'd been training in that position for quite a while. So, really pleased to see it. I just really hope West Ham can get this sorted out. 
Um, but now, mate, let's get on to the talk of the big juicy bits now, this game, because this is where we're going to, you know, I can feel, us, you know, feel myself getting frustrated already thinking about it, was obviously the tail end of the game. The game's wrapped up. West Ham are going to win three points. I, I mean, I never do this. I've got a sort of vow in my mind, right, that I never look at the league table until the game's done. Because mm. I always get a bit like I'm jinxing it if I start going, oh, look, look how many points we've got ahead of them. And I start trying to work things out. But literally with a few minutes to go, I started looking at the league table. So it's so probably my fault that this all happened. But I started looking at the league table thinking, oh, yeah, doing well. Because yeah, I was that confident thinking, yeah, lovely job. Let's just see this game out. I actually thought we're probably going to get a third. That's probably, If it's going to be a goal, to go our way. They're, they're not scoring it. They, they look gone, Sheffield United. And then obviously a ball gets floated into the box. Ariola goes to come and claim the ball or to clear it, punch it. I think it's McBurney. I think he collides with. Um, I'll be honest, when I first saw it, when it first happened, I thought it was a penalty. Like, because just because of the, the, the clash and how it looked kind of like, oh, like he's really hit him. And you think, oh, yeah, like he's, he's taking a risk here. And obviously, straight away, typically from a referee, because they just seem to be so fucking desperate in this league to, to be controversial, he, point, he couldn't wait to point to the spot. Um, and then you look at it. And no, like, it's just such a ridiculous decision. Like, yeah, he's come and caught the player slightly, but he's clearly gone to get the ball. But actually, McBurney's the one that clatters into um, Areola. It's so much so, actually, elbows him in the face. Nasty cut on Areola's top lip. I don't know if you've seen it, but he's really swollen and cut. And so much so, he had to come off the pitch. And yet, nothing's been... They didn't overturn it. They didn't change their minds. They gave it a penalty. Mate, what was your thoughts on that? Because I don't know about you, but I was really shocked and really once again look at this VR thinking, what is the point of this VAR if they're just never ever going to make? They just make some really odd calls. But yeah, there you go. What did you make of it? Uh, well, to be honest, at risk of ruining my reputation as a West Ham fan, I, I have looked at it so many times and I genuinely think it's a penalty, to be honest really? with you. I genuinely okay. do. Yeah, I mean, my, my reasoning for it is that number one, uh, McBurney jumps on the spot. Areola is encroaching. He's the one going towards McBurney. I don't understand if they're both like both going towards each other in the air. Mm. That I can I'd be a lot more understanding. But essentially, McBurney jumps on the spot and Areola goes towards him, initiates the contact, gets none of the ball. I understand that, of course, it hits him in the face. But you know, if I if I'm a player and I dive at someone's knee in the box, like it's still a penalty whether I've got a broken jaw or whether I've got an injury from it. In my mm, eyes, mm. McBurney's jumped for the ball. Ariola's been clumsy. He's got none of the ball. And, you know, his head has collided with Bernie's elbow. Again, I looked at the elbow as well, and it didn't look like the elbow, like he looked at him and it came out. It didn't look like, you know, mm. he was sort of blocking him from getting the ball. In my eyes, I think even if, you know, the elbow, it, it, you know, if, if Ariola hit him in the shoulder with his head or the stomach, you know, is that a penalty for you? Or is it still um, not a penalty? Yeah, I mean, it's difficult, isn't it? I, I think, like, I, 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 there's much I'd say it's like that, but I think what does mean with this is that usually you see that with, with these VAR or referee decisions, they tend to protect the goalkeepers more often than not. That's yeah, what I feel I like we, we tend to get. That, that, that's why I feel like it was a bit harsh on us. Like, most of the time, if there's a colliding with players, and even if you, like you say, I appreciate that McBurney's jumping stationary effectively, and then it's Ariola going for the ball. But usually, most of the time, they protect the goalkeeper. So he's put his arm up. He's caught the player. As you say, I understand what you're saying because Ariola's coming into him. But I just think that nine times out of ten, when you see these things, usually they go, yeah, the player's caught the goalkeeper. It's a foul on the goalkeeper. Free kick West Ham. But, but it wasn't given. That That's a bit that frustrated me because I feel like we've seen this so many times. The amount of times we've seen it against us when keepers have come out and collided with our players. And you've gone, fucking hell. Like, and they've gone, yeah, free kick to them. And you're like, hang yeah. on. He just... That's the bit that done me in. But um, look, like, I understand you're saying, because when I first saw it, I thought it was a penalty. I did. I thought, oh, that's a penalty. But it's only because his arm was up and he's caught the player. And I thought usually yeah. now they'd overturn that and say, yeah, you caught the goalkeeper. But look, it, I agree with you in some regards. And I do think that was probably the only one that you kind of go, yeah, like, OK. Like, we probably were a bit, uh, hard, a bit harsh on us a little but, bit. But to be fair, McBurney was never going to get that ball anyway. And, you know. Yeah, it, I, it, I, I agree. Like, it was stupid for Mariola. Yeah, like I think if you if you put a gun to my head and ask me whether it's a penalty or not, yeah, like I say, at the risk of being ostracised from the West Ham fan base, I generally do think it is a penalty. Um, I've already got a lot of hate for on Twitter for it, and I know I'm going to get berated in the comments, but I got <laughs> I got to be honest with myself, like I generally think it's a penalty. But again, mm. like you say, there's no consistency because 
How is the Onana one at the start of the season not yeah. a penalty? Absolutely. But then that one is that, that's my point. That, that is, yeah. Again, what you're saying, and you're completely right in it. But I think mm. if I'm looking at that, I just do think that that is a penalty because he's caught the player. Yes, he's caught him in the elbow, but in my eyes, it doesn't matter what body part you hit. If you are encroaching onto a player, initiating the contact, getting none of the ball, I mean, it's clumsy from Areola as it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, but again, McBurney was never going to get that ball. It's the end of the game. It's a massive decision. Um, and like you say, you know, even though VL looked at it, you know, uh, things like Onana just coming in and absolutely clattering people with their hands is not <laughs> yeah. a penalty. And then all of a sudden, yeah, yeah. for us, it is. That, that's what's annoying is there's zero consistency. I don't know what a penalty looks like anymore, especially no, when don't. it's goalkeepers. One minute they're protected and the next minute, you know, they should be doing better. Like, it just yeah. makes it... Me. That's the frustrating thing, isn't it? Like that, I think that's what we're all getting exhausted with the VAR and the referee in this country, and it's just or whatever across the world, whatever it is, it's just no consistency. Like you say, I don't want to literally. Or is it Newcastle they were playing? I can't remember now who they were I remember playing. the Bowen one against Chelsea, where Bowen accidentally just just his trailing foot and knocks Mendy. And yeah, because it, yeah, and and that's 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 doomed as like a foul. That goalkeepers are so protected, and yet. When it comes to us, it's yeah, just yeah, matter. exactly, and uh, that's the bit I don't get. I, I just think it, that's the frustrating bit for me. Like, where, why is it that yeah, some games you watch it and you think, well, he's not even gone near the goalkeeper here. He's not done anything. It's just because the goalkeeper has got slightly touched. It's deemed a foul. But yeah, our one gets an elbow right in the face, cuts his mouth open. And they go, no, ignoring that penalty. And you're thinking, mm. come on, like, we... but look, I, I don't want to be one of those people that just moans and whinges about refereeing decisions all the time and act like it was hard. Unfortunately, we're going to have. Um, let's just assume that like, you know, it's 50-50, it's gone out against us. And as I said, when I first saw it, when he first caught, caught when, when I was watching it live, I thought, that's a penalty. So, that, I, I, so if they, with or without VAR, let's just imagine he didn't have VAR and I was on the pitch as a ref, I probably would have called it a penalty anyway. So let's just say that they kind of got away with it a little bit, but you know, it is what it is. And then, remarkably, yeah, obviously they score it, um, two all. Within seconds, we're up the other end of the pitch. I've never seen a decision like this one where the, the, their defender literally rugby tackles um, uh, and quite literally rugby tackles um, Bowen to the ground. Bowen's going to either, he's, he's basically going to be going one on one with the goalkeeper. He's going to put it away. Just rugby tackled into the ground. It's a clear penalty. I couldn't believe in my luck, actually. I don't know about you, but I was like, oh my God, we've got a penalty mm -hmm. like straight away. And the referee gives a foul to Sheffield United. So not only have we been done at that end, where you're thinking, oh, we could have had that, it could have been protected. Now the other end, our players getting clattered and, and on, the, on the ground, and the referee bizarrely calls a foul against Bowen. I've never seen a decision like it. And well, not only that, the, the VAR didn't even look at it. Like, why are they not even saying so that? Like, this is what does me in with VAR. Like, why can't there just be like a human normal, like? common sense approach like just someone watching this go hang on ref mate you've just you've totally cocked up there mate that's a penalty that's all it needed and they'd have gone really yeah look, look send him over to the screen just have a double check at this but we're really sure he's clear they didn't even bother looking at it um i'm really it, i think it was because like it was at the end of the game and the ref blew up for full time but if you remember the yeah. ref blew up for full time uh, at Brighton versus Man United. And then after the full-time whistle had gone, yeah. the ref pulled it back for a penalty for Man United for Bruno Fernandes. So if they if they give that as an excuse, that's not good enough for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they haven't looked at it. The player actually came out on social media and said, oh, Bowen sort of fell onto me. And then I sort of fell over because his weight was on me. And I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> I know, I know. He actually, he literally quoted the tweet that was on Match of the Day where every single pundit was like, well, yeah, that's a penalty. Yeah, I agree. It's a penalty. And he was uh, like, well, just, yeah, well, it's yeah. not a penalty, is it? Because he basically fell onto me. I was like, you've got your arms around his waist. You're not even looking at the ball. If he's mm. fallen onto you, it's because you're basically stuck to his backside. I mean, it's it, yeah, again, it is ridiculous. And and if you're going to say the Areola one's a foul, then how on earth is that one not a foul? You know, yeah, it, yeah. You can see, to see in one game is not even there. And, mate, we've even brushed over the fact the two red cards happened prior to these. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, exactly. Unbelievable. Yeah. Um, I mean, the first one, Brewster, wasn't it? A nasty, nasty challenge on um, uh, Emerson. Uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, yeah, sorry, the game finished there too, also uh, really frustrating. And I mean, I, I, I'm exhausted talking about VAR. I can't I feel like it's just a boring subject that we just talk about every because unfortunately, that is what football's become just this flipping VAR debacle because it's just crap. I'm so tired of VAR now. Like, it's just got to the stage where you just think, just bin it now. Like, it doesn't work. Like, you've tried it. We're now into, what, year five, year six of this year VAR? 
shit and it's just never getting any better. Every week is a problem. And, you know, you they, they come out, this, um, what's his name, Howard Webb, who runs the referee in, um, uh, what they called, uh, board or whatever, uh, body. And they, and he comes out of all these things. We've been working on it all summer. We've come, we've simplified the rules. It's going to be really straightforward. Everyone's going to have, and then literally from day one, it's like crap, like utter crap. Like, and we're now halfway through a Premier League season again, and we're just the same shit. And yeah, really frustrating. But I will go on record to say, um, that I don't think we deserve to win the game because of the way we played. I don't think, I don't think, I don't, I'm, it's not as if we played Sheffield United off the pitch and then you go, then you'd be really angry because you'd be like, my God, we deserve that. Part of me actually feels like, well, draw probably was a fair result in the end anyway. We weren't very good overall. I'm, and, look, and I'm not having a go at David Moyes for that. I'm not kicking the manager. I don't think, it, I think his hands are tied a little bit at the moment. We are lacking many of our first team players. We are quite, we're missing Caduce terribly. Um, out of Paqueta, we're missing Antonio from the bench. We're missing uh, Alvarez. You know, we are we are really struggling with numbers at the moment. Um, I'm actually quite optimistic still about the season, mate. To be honest with you, um, but uh, on another day we'd have won the game. But yeah, they're right. Let's talk about the red card. So um, Brewster obviously went to the back of Emerson. Uh, nasty. Got pulled back by VAR. Right, like that stepped in. Actually, did the right thing for once. Um, <laughs> Why did the referee not think it was a red card in the fucking first place? I, I know, I know. And do what does mean, right? And I know, you know, I'm not to contradict myself here, man, about VAR. Why does it take so long as well? Like, you know, when they go to the screen and they go, right, ref, we're going to get you to look at it. What, like you say, one, he should have just seen it in the first place. It was a terrible challenge. But he has to look at it like 30 times, like looking at it, looking at it. It's like, mate, like once is enough. Surely to God go, oh my God, yeah, that's terrible. Call him over a red card. Why have they got to continually look at it and look at it and look at it and look at it? I just it's ego, it's, mate. I'm telling oh. you, it's ego. They don't want to sit there. Essentially, to them, if they if they sit there and say, Well, that's a yellow card, and then the VAR basically go, Listen, mate, I, we actually have no choice but to go over to the screen because it's that bad a fucking call. Like you're actually <laughs> cocked up that much. We can't yeah, even like yeah. people free up. And he goes to screen and he's like, nah, no, I, uh, 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 you know, yeah, like, hang on, hang he, on. Like not only not only is he not only is he flying in recklessly, so that's a tick, which is usually can even be a red card in itself if you're just going in completely reckless. Two, he's challenging from behind, which I believe is immediately a, a, a terrible. You know, could even be a red card anyway if you go in straight from behind. He's also going in two footed and for, and studs up. It's literally like four red cards thrown to one, and he's going. Oh, let's have a little look and at this. It's like, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's, it's ridiculous, but. That's the, that's the thing. You say things like scrap VAR, but if VAR was in the FA Cup, we might still be in it. And if VAR wasn't present last night, yeah, we could see the penalty, but he would have missed the most blatant red card I've seen. Yeah, all yeah. Season. So, it, it, you know, it's, it's more the way VAR is being used as opposed to the other one. And then, uh, let's be fair, I mean, Sufau, it's clumsy. It, it probably is a second yellow, you know. It's a little bit late. It's a little bit unlucky from him because he is going towards the ball, but he does catch the man. And, you know, I'm, I'm yeah. not, I've got too many... Um, you know, maybe you're basically telling me that the yellow card that Sue Fowl got is at the same know, level where it is a Ryan, the Ryan Bruce attack. I've got again, the feeling I'm not that... sure what you're officially, I'm not sure what the what the rules are anymore. No, I mean, I, I, my, my feeling was with that Sue Fowl one, that was a referee desperately trying to level up the playing field a little bit with that. Like, I've sent one off, I'm just going to desperately try and find a reason to get yeah. West Ham play off this pitch. Because yeah. the first yellow card was ridiculous because he had a go at him. Yeah, it was to do with the sending off, the first send off, wasn't it? So Soufal came over and it was obviously mouthed off the ref and said, fucking hell, like, you know, what have you missed? Like, it's a terrible challenge. He's then booked him for dissent. Look, we don't know what was said. He could have said something really nasty to him. But fucking probably right and all. But he said, ref, like, he nearly he could have broken his leg and you just sort of let it go and go, oh, he's all right. Um, so he's booked him for that. But yeah, the second one I thought was really soft, but uh, is what it is. Annoying. We lost too foul. But to be honest with you, uh, the way Johnson's playing at the moment, I'm not too just too worried about it. I think he, he could step in and do a job. He's been good for us. So, um, but yeah, really annoying. Um, we obviously got two yellow cards. That misses, mean, means he misses one game. Look, a really frustrating day, mate, um, for West Ham because it, it should have been three points, really. Feels like we've been conned out of that one by the ref. I mean, the, the decision on Bowen was so, so harsh. Uh, to not give us a penalty at the end. But uh, as I said, that being said, the only thing that cushions the blow a little bit for me, I don't know if you agree, I, I it's not a game that I was sitting there thinking, God, we really deserve that. We played really well. I kind of thought I kind of thought to myself in the first half when it was 1-0, or oh, sorry, one all at half time, thinking I'd be quite happy with a point really out of this game just to get a point, get out of here and, and draw a line under it because I don't think we were that good. 
Yeah. But so that, that's the only thing that cushions the blow. But look, it's not all doom and gloom, mate. There are, although we're being quite, neg- you know, not negative, but we're talking about the controversy of that game. I think there was some, actually a good few positives out of it. Obviously, one, number one, and probably the biggest number one was Jared Bowen being back fit. Played a whole game, um, looked fresh, looked okay. Didn't have, looked like didn't look like he was struggling at all. I think that's a big, big tick to see and great to see him back playing. Um, and we've got to talk about Danny Ings, mate. I mean, my word, where did that come from? Like, you know, obviously he's played in a better role that suits him better. He's not a lone striker; he can't deal with it. But having Bowen ahead of him and him playing a deeper role, wow! And where? I mean, I was stunned. I was stunned when I saw his name on the team sheet. I was pissed off. I thought, oh god, here we go, another Danny Ings special. But Mate, he shut everybody up, including myself, and I'm delighted he did because uh, he was great. What, what did you make of Bings? I mean, I mean, yeah. Uh, again, like I think he played well. Uh, he didn't probably get the goal that he deserved. I mean, to be fair, we didn't even brush over the fact that um, I think Danny Ings uh, claimed that there was like a handball for a shot or something like that, and I don't think VAR really looked at that very much. I saw. Oh, I, no. I don't really think I saw that. That too many big shouts for that during the game, but no. Realistically, he could have won two penalties and, you know, obviously his shot was rebounded to corner, which obviously caused the goal. So, yeah, I think he played very well. I, I do wonder if maybe he looked at that Bristol City performance and thought, you know, am I done with football? You know, I'm, I'm getting basically berated uh, by every single fan. You know, I, mm. I don't know how much they check social media, if they even care. But he thinks to himself, do you know what? Commentators basically slating and saying we don't want to be here. Maybe mm. I'm just going to actually, you know, try and prove to myself and everyone else that, I have still got what it takes and I can still play well. But I agree. I think, you know, Corne, Bowen and Ings is quite a balanced front three. You know, Paqueta, when he plays at the left wing, is quite elusive. And, you know, Caduce as well sort of cuts him right. And, you know, he, he does what he does. Um, same way sort of Bowen will. But Bowen's a lot better at sort of giving the attacker some space and allowing them to play off them because he's played with Antonio so many times on that right uh, in that right wing spot. So I think it's quite a balanced front three and, and one that probably helped Danny Ings to be able to get and grow his way into the game. Mm, mm. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And um, what I like about it as well, I think it gives us like another option now, like we didn't have before that game. Like Moyes now knows where he plays. Like, right, don't, don't do the mistake again of putting Danny Ings up front of his own. It doesn't work. It never has worked. It's been awful. But actually, if you've got someone else that plays ahead of him and just drop him a little bit deeper, he's really effective. And I was really pleased for him. And it was so lovely to hear the West Ham fans singing his name. Like I felt really, just really pleased for him. Like, And I'm glad it fell on back on me a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I, I moaned about him before I, in the preview. said I didn't want to see him wear a West Ham shirt again. I even put it in a tweet um, the day before as well. So it was nice to sort of like retract that and say, do you know what? I'm really glad you actually put in a good shift because... Like my God, he needed it, and I'm I'm sure he'd be he'd be buzzing with that performance because it was good. Um, no, it, and and obviously another point bonus as well. Another big tick was um Ben Johnson. I mean, just another good performance from him coming off the bench, looking good, and 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 fair play to the academy boys as well. You know, like no, they didn't get a run out, and uh, you can understand why because it wasn't a comfortable day, and they it would have been tough to throw them out there. I mean, I'd, I'd like to see a bit more of them, but good to see him on the bench. Great experience for them, lads. They must be thinking, you know, we're actually playing, we're in m- amongst Premier League football now. This is pretty good. Um, uh, so, no, I was really, really pleased for him. Um, tough day, mate, all round. A little bit frustrating, but it's a draw away from home in the Premier League. I don't, you know, I know it's against the bottom table club and you want to get those results, but we didn't lose. It's not the end of the world. We've got Bournemouth at home next, who just got an t- absolute tonking from Liverpool. So, probably not a bad time to be playing them. And you'd like to think, Riley, by the time we play Bournemouth, not only would we possibly have Paqueta back, possibly, fingers crossed, um, but we've got Jared Bowen, obviously, fit. We might even have Caduce, about it, but you never know. It's 10 days, isn't it? I don't know if that'll... No, it could be, could be, if they go out, but I don't know if it's going to be quite tough. And then on top of that, um, we could have some more signings, mate. We could have Calvin Phillips over the line, maybe one or two players. So by the time we get Bournemouth at London Stadium, this team could be looking far, far fresher, a bit more, a bit of excitement around the club. I'm, I'm ready for the second half of the season now, mate. I'm really um, sort of in gear and I've, I've got some high hopes. Um, I think when you don't play that well and still get a draw and probably deserve to maybe win it, it's not a bad sign. So, yeah, all in all, mate, I, I, I would say it's pretty uh, not bad. What's your sort of final thoughts on the result? Yeah, I mean, often you, the, the teams at the lower end of the table are the tougher teams to beat because they don't try and play pretty football. They try and clatter your game. They try and get those decisions. Um and yeah, like you say, I mean, the positive is hopefully in 10 days time, uh, we'll have Paqueta back. We'll have maybe some new players coming through the doors. Uh, players like Ben Johnson Johnson could be, you know, for the next seven days, 10 days, 
be in training, practicing that centre midfield role. And also, you know, Alvarez coming back will be absolutely massive for us as well. Um, so, yeah, as far as I'm concerned, a draw, is a, it was a fair result on the day. It's probably not what you want when you're facing the bottom of the league. Um, but, you know, let's be face it, you're always going to have those sorts of games where you don't play well. And, and if there's ever a game for us not to play well, it was that one. You know, being without so many first team players, um, it was always going to be tough for us. But like you say, we get a point. We've got 10 days now to move on and, and hopefully kick off our second uh, second half of the season. And, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty confident about it. And, um, yeah, I hope we just see some fresh faces uh, come the 1st of February. Absolutely right. Come, let's do it. Come on, your minds. Thank <laughs> you.